All right, you're asking for it, so here it is. Listen to this. It's the second episode. I'm going to get it going. All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the 137th episode of the Drinking Partners Podcast. Yes, this is our Sean Alexander episode because 37 is a hard athlete to find. And he also played against Pittsburgh in the Super Bowl, which is dope, although they came up short. Yeah. Shout out to Sean Alexander because he scored yeah, a lot of touchdowns and y'all don't give him the respect he was deserves. Was he the running back? He was a running back. The, the Seahawks running back. Yeah, he was the Seahawks I running back. Him. Yeah, before they had like good players. So I'm going to give it this, yo. He, he was very prolific, did did his thing, did not get the respect he deserved. Was he on the cover of Madden MVP. once? Um, I don't know. There was some Seahawks player, wasn't there, like around that time? It may have been him. I don't know. But we can get our respect by voting us. If you voted us uh, two-time winner of the best podcast, that would be dope. I would feel yeah. super respected. I am half of your hosting tandem, Ed Bailey. I'm joined, as always, with my co-host, Dave Bracey. Say what up to the people. What's good with you people? Uh, we are Drinking Partners. If you're looking for us, you can find us on epicastnetwork.com slash partnerspod. You can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Lipson, and Google Play under Drinking Google. Partners. You can find us on iTunes. <laughs> you can find us on IG, Twitter, and Facebook. At Partners Pod, uh, 137 episodes, man. We've been asking you, and we'll continue to ask you, man. Please hop on iTunes, <laughs> rate and review, man. Uh, that's it how helps. we know it does help, man. Like uh, that's how we know what we're doing well. Cause we read these, you know what I mean. You tell us, you know, the things that we work on, the things that, you know I mean, that make us good. Uh, you know, what I mean, it uh, it helps us let others know that we're doing. You know I mean, yeah. they go on and they read that, and it helps us continue to do well because people who read those reviews, they know how what they're getting into. You know what I mean, you so a lot of a lot of body to that. I, because I think, <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I think you know, they feel us some type of way. Get I on there, rate and review, like, man. You know, I'm like, yeah, you know, we 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 can use them. We know? can definitely, we, we can use, definitely those. use them. It matters, it yeah. Us. People people read that shit when they're trying to find a podcast. Yeah. Yeah, you I mean, love us You tell us you love us Now just go to iTunes Click the button And tell the world Yeah You know what I mean And all as always In lieu of rates and reviews We will take shots of him Yes we will mm-hmm. Shout always. out to Car Guy I'll DJ And too. the Conway There you go I guess we'll take them as well <laughs> um, And if you rate and review We'll read it on the podcast um, And I'm going to find it And read one Because we're live But this is all be edited Out of the actual podcast this review is titled Realist, not The Realist, just Realist, by Ashley Yan. And that's, yes, it's Ashley Yan. Yan, like a Y. Bunch of Ys? Like yams, but with an N. Yan, oh, um, Ashley Yan. Yeah, so I'm not exactly sure who that is, what what demographic she's well, this is with. Ashley Yan, But her thank review. you, Ashley Yan. You said two real dudes talking about real dope Pittsburgh topics, wonderful guests, even Mayor Peduto, never a disappointment. Well, thank you, Ashley. Wow. You Yen. feel better. <laughs> you feel better about us than we feel about ourselves. I'm sure. There's sometimes I walk. I'm like, man, could have been a little better. But hey, Ashley Yan, we don't ever disappoint. It's Ashley Yan. Right? Ashley Yan. And you we are real and dope you. yourself. We appreciate that, man. Uh, what we got coming up? We got September 29th and 30th. Rob Cantrell. T- C- y- Rob Cantrell. Rob Cantrell out of New York. At, I tried to say <laughs> all that. There's a lot of words for the second episode. Y'all don't understand. I, I, there, there's so many words I have to say, but Rob Cantrell down at Contra Theater, September 29th and 30th. Yes. Uh, going to be a great time. Yeah, we got uh, North Country Brewing um, out of Slippery Rock. They're going to be down there sponsoring Friday. And then uh, Helicon uh, down in Oakdale. I mean, they're bringing the Germans. Uh, they're going to be down there uh, <laughs> September You're going to have a 30th. protest outside of our show, man. <laughs> You can't, you cannot in this time in 2017 say that you're gonna bring the Germans hey. to a show. And just you know, ass you, Germans. you might, you might come out there to protest. You get a free sample and you taste what I'm talking about, and you'd be like, ah, this ain't too bad. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> we will make you believe it, man. They are those German loggers are fucking delicious. They, uh, I think what episode 130, 133, they were on. Uh, but check the, check out that episode or whatever. But uh, they will be down there. <laughs> Whichever September. episode it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of those in that range. Check it out. Hear about the beer. They're dope. And thank them for coming out and, uh, and sponsoring. And obviously, North Country. Dope beer. Dope yeah. shit. Like, I'm not going to be in Pittsburgh for that. But I, I would go for North Country. They have, like, my favorite beer I've ever had. Plum Bob. 
Mm. Have not that, some, but I hope they bring some it. Some sour that they do. Yeah. It's like the best thing I've ever had. Shit, this is going to drop before that. So Res- if you're listening to North Country, bring some of that motherfucking Respect. plum bob. There. <laughs> Respect to your plum bob. True. Um, but yeah, no, Rob Cantrell, I mean, like you've seen him on Comedy Central, and uh, you know, he's got a couple specials. Uh, you know, Check those out, and then uh, come see him September 29th and the 30th, and have a beer with him, man, as always. Do it. BYOB. Yes, and uh, come out to Hilltopolis on September 22nd up at Grandview Park. Going to be dope. I met my met my wife there. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Oh man, well, you, the, you, the one that's coming up. You're welcome. Yeah. In the words mm-hmm. of Biggie yeah. Smalls, if you don't know, now you know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Stay tuned to to more Epic Has events because <laughs> I mean, shit. If you miss this one, then you know the next one's gonna be. Nah. This episode is sponsored by Voodoo Brewery. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is, man. Uh, drinking some of this white magic. Oh, and this. Uh, Gotta it, pause that one, too, as a black man. I don't know if we can say that, but this is a good beer. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a great beer, man. Uh, it's, a, it's a Belgian ale. Um, it's a Belgian wheat ale. And if uh, you're like, yeah, what is, you know, it's uh, it's it's mild. Um, it has, you know, a little banana in there in the low end. Um, and, he made the banana. Yeah, a, little, <laughs> a little banana in the low end or whatever, but it's, it's, it's very onboarding beer. I mean, you think of like the blue moons and like more of the, you know, like lighter flavors. Right. Um, it's an Impala it, SS, strong starter. Yeah, it's, it's, it's 7.3. Yeah, and it's a 7.3. So you think of blue moon, but you add, yeah, I mean, like a good mouthfeel and much more flavor and uh, bump it up to 7.3 and that's a good beer. Good. Yeah, and if you're looking for I Voodoo, the they have three pubs across Western PA, Erie, Meville, and my favorite, Homestead. Yeah, So yeah, go out and check right them out. Uh, they're, they're award-winning brewery. I mean, they've got tons on the walls. Um, if you can't be- get beer at your local beer store, uh, ask them to carry it, man. Like, you can just be like, hey, yo, you ain't got any, you ain't, you ain't got any uh, Voodoo? You ain't got no Voodoo? None of that abracadabra on deck. <laughs> Tell them abracadabra, and, and you'll be telling them the drinking part to sit you. Yeah, I mean, like, what do you mean you ain't got no voodoo on deck? You know, so tell them to get out there. I mean, and uh, voodoo is employee owned, which you know we love that about them. And uh, they're also veteran operated company. You know I mean, so we support the vets. You know, support on a regular troops. basis, man. Support your troops. Support all of your troops. Support yourself. You know I mean, voodoo. Yeah. Truth. And if you're looking for Voodoo, man, check them out on www.voodoobrewery.com or follow them on Facebook and on Instagram at Voodoo Brewing. It's good to get drunk on, right? It's good. It's yeah. It's, it's, it's good, good to drink. To, it's good to drink. Yes. Yeah. It is. <laughs> Whatever you do, mowing the lawn. Yeah. I mean, you want to turn up. You want to turn down. You want to yeah, throw I mean, back four of them voodoos. Mow that lawn. You do what you do. What you do. Mow that lawn. Do what you do. That's what gonna you be voodoo. a new line dance in 2019. It's gonna be called Mow That Lawn. But listen. <laughs> Uh, if you like the way we sound, look and sound actually, because we, we're streaming live here. That's because of Epicast, man. Yeah, That's Buzzy and the crew making it happen, man. Like, yeah, they they, they do that on the regular. I mean, because um, it's they, with the photos and you know like the the sound quality like they make it sound like a you know look like a much better it experience like than what it yeah like than what it really is have you, you listened to other podcasts some of them sound like dog shit that's what yeah which is like a basic thing you know yeah it's just the, the the cracks and the pops and the ums and all the middle shit you know oh, it's mean? like when they used to put a record on yeah. <laughs> <laughs> your grandmother used to, used to put a record on at that one long speaker coming out the show <laughs> when, yeah it sound like that yeah when cartoons still had like black characters with large lips. Oh, <laughs> I mean, it didn't sound like that shit. It don't sound like that on Ipecast. Yeah, I mean, they 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 do they do as well. So you know, if uh, you're looking to get your podcast to sound better, maybe you want to uh, uh, promote an event, um, or you want to start your own podcast, uh, or you want to advertise, you know, your podcast on a uh, award winning uh, podcast such as this one that we're. Uh, yeah, we got we got we got one. We're looking for two. Yeah, you know, trying to go man to man. Back to back. But uh, you know, if you're looking for that. You know, do uh, a podcast now. Yeah, yeah hop, uh, do a podcast and while, hop on Epicast while Network. Available, get on that. Truth, you know what I mean? Because they filling up and they expanding. So uh, hop on Epicast Network.com uh, slash services and uh, tell them that the drinking partner sent you. Yeah, well, give give us that referral credit. We gotta meet our quota. Otherwise, we're gonna have to stop recording. No, let me not say that because Buzzy might really think about that. <laughs> Help us reach our quota. True. 
All right, so we got to bring our guests in. This is fun. This is a fun day. Like, if y'all don't know, this is episode two of two for the day. Yeah, it is. Uh, so we're we're feeling good, feeling great, feeling and great, feeling our, good. This, and this is our second comic, man. This which, is the second friend. Just yeah, a friend yeah. and family member. Yeah. Epic cast mm. family member. Uh, he's on, well, let me see, on, on the pits. Yep. Did I fuck that up? Yeah, he's on, he's on the pits. It's, he's, it's, hard to, it's hard to keep these things in order. Right in yeah. this room. This is where we do it. I'm in this <laughs> yeah. room all the time doing that shit. <laughs> give him murder or give him death, but it's give me murder, give me death, but I can't put my name in murder because the feds are coming for me. So yeah. and, give me and, murder, give me death. And uh, yeah, you like this. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. You yeah. like that. His Kirk Cousins. Uh, we got Alex Tapula in the building. Say what up to the people. What's up? Thank you guys for having me and welcome to your own podcast. Nice. I like how because he's a podcaster, so this ain't. I like. I like. I always. Anytime I have a, po- a fellow podcaster on, I'm secretly hoping that they'll just do their podcast, and then I could just sit in the like you know passenger just seat. Be in the room. Yeah, just <laughs> be in the room because I like. I, I did raise. I mean, shout out to Raise Watney. He's got a podcast going on or whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean, and like, and I got to sit down, and it's rare that I actually get to sit down and not have to worry about you know making it a thing. You yeah, know? yeah. It's a great place to be. So yeah, on mine. I, I have to I usually just like copy and paste a bunch of Wikipedia shit about <laughs> whatever murder. So I don't I don't have that prepared. <laughs> okay, so for those who are not familiar with your comedy, they're probably thinking, how the what the fuck is Give Me Murder, Give Me Death? How did that come about? It's a pod it's a comedy podcast about murder. Which okay. make, sounds not great. Well it sounds very jokerish. Yeah, sounds a little jokerish, but basically, there's other, there's like really super popular comedy murder podcasts, comedy, let's say true crime, but mostly about murder. My favorite murder has blown up recently. It's like one of the biggest podcasts. It's these two female. Comics I thought you were from... going to say your favorite murder blew up. Like, <laughs> yeah, like people just found out about it. Like, you just start getting retweets. Like, yeah. what? Oh, I've been new. About yeah, that, that didn't. I got late to the party. <laughs> I was an original fan. Yeah, like, it didn't sound good out of context. I don't like his up. new shit. Uh, <laughs> there's that, and then there's the last podcast on the left, and then so I've always been into true crime. And then my friend, who she, her name's Lena Berry. She's never done comedy. I've just known her for a long time. Mm. She has no involvement in comedy or performance of any kind. Really? But yeah, I've just, I've known her for like eight or nine years. And then last summer was the first time we found out we were both super into true crime. And so we were texting. How that come? <laughs> like, we were just hey. talking about podcasts, like what we listened to. And it was all these like true uh, crime ones. So that's how they're like connecting the pseudo serial killers. It's yeah. Like, yeah, I mean. Like, that's how you find out who's like going to be a serial killer one day. <laughs> well, who has potential? Not necessarily going to be, but who has potential? Here's the thing. I'm I'm into true crime. To say, I, I do like those yeah. shows. I don't know. They're uncomfortable. I don't know. It's like a morbid curiosity. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. weird. Cause I mean, it ain't I, even a lot of Saw movies. Clearly, we like death. Well, here's There's a, a lot here's, of death. Here's the weird thing. I don't really like Saw movies. I've never really liked scary movies where, you know, there's a bunch of murder in them. I never Game really of Thrones. Cared for like, there's so many. Like, the Game whole Thrones. society is built on so violence. Game there's of a Thrones lot of and it gets, has, like, reason for the murder, though. I understand. There's, it's a technical thing. There's a reason thing. for every murder. Well, there is, but in Game of Thrones, I see why you're about to murder this person. And Saw and is just like I fucking get to insane. Decide whether a, or not it was yeah. justified. Like, yeah. As a viewer, I'm like, all right, well, that makes sense. He had to kill so and so. With these shows, I don't know why. I yeah, watch well, those. I mean, yeah. Cerny, Cersei blew up the. Uh, spoiler alert if you ain't watching the shit, but like, last she. Season, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, like, it's but she that. blew up the whole fucking, like, yeah, I mean. I didn't <laughs> feel bad for any one of those people. <laughs> it was. <laughs> you. You didn't know most of them. That was, <laughs> it was that. Yeah, it was a mass killing. I still and don't, they got a like, check for it. What do you mean you didn't feel bad for anyone? It was a mass murder. It was like thousands of people. Like, you didn't feel bad for anybody. Like no, because they all collected a check after that episode. True. Like I'm cool with that. True. They didn't die. Oh, it was yeah. quick. Oh, it was quick too. Well, it was quick <laughs> yeah. in the way to go. Mm-hmm. I could see that. Yeah, yeah they I got mean, blown up by green shit. Yeah, and I don't yeah. understand how. I still don't know the science behind that, but that happened. There's Worst yeah. ways to go in that in that in that regard, and like and then the you know none of it, but like they were there to kind of cheer on some old foul shit that was going on. Well, they they were sh- carving some shit into a dude's forehead. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. was. I mean, it was and then the world might not be the worst off. So are we? Are we Cersei sympathizers? We are all Cersei. I think I think there are Cersei sympathizers, and well, there is some sympathetic feeling in. In all of us for Cersei because she creates that reaction in everyone. Yeah. Some people there are Cersei fans. Mm. There are people who hate her. She's, she's such not an a real asshole. person. She nah. is an asshole, but, but she's 
kind of a decent mom, sort of. Yeah, as a mom, you know, <laughs> like, I think people. I don't know. On that, level, all of her kids are dead. Yeah, <laughs> all my kids, all her are, kids dead. are dead. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. That's like, <laughs> I mean, in the you the, know, and a lot of them were as a direct result of her, her. That's like parenting. the first job of being a mom is like make sure they don't die. <laughs> Keep right? them alive. Yeah, you gotta, yeah. If you fail at keeping them alive, like if the I, one like, daughter became a stripper, that would be much better than than yeah. throwing themselves out of a window. Damn. I always forget that. That is like number one on the list. Like, don't make sure your kids aren't dead. At least alive to. Question. I should call my mom. Yeah. Like, you did a good on that. Make num- sure they're not first dead one. by things that could be avoided. Yeah, that's what you. Yeah, like, and then it, that only goes to a certain age, I think. Because then, if you if you create your own illness and it's based off your lifestyle, that that's on you if you're an adult. Yeah, true. true. So yeah, I, that and then stripping, like as but, as a father of a daughter, yeah, stripping. Mm. Don't let. I mean, so that's number two. Don't let your kids get murdered or commit suicide. Two of them were murders. One was a suicide. And number two is not don't let her become a stripper. You just don't want her to become a stripper. I mean, yeah. in the you know, I, I'm, yeah. I'm looking when I look at stripping. I'm looking at like you know profit potential, right? I mean, and what you're doing in, in the environment that you're at, it's not the best working environment. So I wouldn't want my daughter to strip any much more than I would want her to work at like McDonald's when she's 28. That doesn't, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, you know, you, I mean, it's not like that's not the ideal environment. But if she is in a situation for whatever fucking reason, say the whole world goes to shit, and yeah, I mean, whatever, I'm not gonna be like you know, oh well, you know. Like, I'm not gonna look down on her or be like you can't. Yeah, you know I mean, I just want to. Depends on how she feels about it. Exactly. It's just one of I those. Mean? Yo, my body, my you know whatever. My body, my choice or whatever. Yeah, and that's she, how yeah, she really feels. She then yeah. you can't look down on her because of it. But if she's like, I just gotta get this rent paid. Yeah, you know, no, like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, smothering. I'm gonna pay your <laughs> rent before. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> like, I might have to go strip <laughs> in order for you to get these dollars. But yeah, don't judge I'm, her for doing it. Yeah, but it you know probably is on un- an unpleasant like it's, you said yeah, working. Nah, I'm not. Uh, that's not what I'm just, like shooting for the moon. Like yeah, go on. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> like it's how oh, two or two happens. Like, there's no, I don't that's know not where too we're high. going shooting, with that. Shooting for the I mean, but like, I mean, look, you look at Cardi B. Like, you know, like it's like, oh, is her dad like mad at her or whatever? I don't know her dad's situation, but like, is he mad? She's driving a Bentley and having you know wide you know success in her shit. Like, yeah, is I she... mean, I think it came more from her personality than the yeah. stripping. I think the stripping maybe have. Introduce her to people She was known to people Because of it But her personality Is what blew her up And can we talk about The Bodak Yellow And the fact that I'm just not feeling that song Well dude Let's talk about the fact that That was a straight rip off I Whoa, didn't realize yeah, that Kodak From Black, the dip Like yeah. I was like I don't look I was like oh we shit We are definitely not acting Like that happened And I'm just like I, I, But I, like, the first song was Alright this ain't better Than the first one So why is this Like the biggest song I don't, I don't, I don't know I don't, I don't, I've never heard A, a Cardi B song Other than the Bodak yeah, you know I mean, yellow or whatever, and like it's a catchy tune. Like you know, it has that hard. It has all the elements for you to be hype as fuck about it. But like, who you is know, this? Uh, this is uh, Cardi B. So she appears she's a, uh, a reality TV star. She used to be it. a stripper. Don't and, don't get familiar. Yeah, no, she was, get familiar. I'm not trying to hate was, on her. Do your thing. She was a reality know. TV star, and she was on some show. What show was she on? I, probably a love and hip hop. Some, something on VH1. Yeah, I mean, VH1 and, turned into like the trash reality. Oh God! Shit. Well, BT, what is that? Oh, VH1. That's when because BT, VH1. And I don't know what reality is. shows come on BT. I don't. I don't watch any of them, motherfuckers. This is all trash. But like, she made that trash into treasure. She's like profiting off of it, and like and she's a, she does music. She does. She's a, it, now she does something music. like that. Yeah. Is it actually popular? It is it's the very song now, that yeah. she just released, the Bodak Yellow, is very popular. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's a it's it's a remake of the song of another popular rapper who I think he's currently incarcerated. For real. He may have gotten yeah, out. Co- yeah, you know, he's he's he was in he was on trial for rape for multiple instances. Yeah, he and he's a terrible individual in that regard. Uh, but he made a popular well, he had, had a freestyle but, type thing yeah. and then she copied the, you know, like the rhythm and the style of it and then delivered it and put it next to a nice producer and released it. What and now she She's on the top charts. It, 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 women love that shit. It's, yeah. it's, I won't say it's empowering to them, but they do. It's it's a song that they don't normally have that kind of bigs up them. You know what I mean? I get it. And yeah. I ain't mad at her for it. I just, I, mm. I can't be riding around listening to Bodak Yellow. You know, I, I, yeah, I can't bang that uh, in the whip. And uh, But it know, ain't for me. I couldn't because I never anything. heard of it. No. Don't do it. 
Nah. You nah, can't either. bang the Bodak and then go listen to Give Me Murder, Give Me Death. Those shit's just Nah, you're probably right. Those shits contradict each other like a mug. You might, man. Like, I mean But if you're into that, you could. Yeah, no, I mean shit. I you know, I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I could turn up. I mean, I did. I, I was down at Boom Concepts, they threw a nice little gig or whatever. Paco you know what I mean? jeans. And yeah. <laughs> it was down at Boom in the Paco. It was down at Boom Concepts or whatever. And uh, you know, they had Bodak Yellow on and it is a turn up, yeah. You know I mean, song. You know I mean a lot the whole of women crowd. In the yeah. Oh, a lot my of women. God. In the it was a lot of I would nod my head to Bodak was, Yellow if there's a lot of women in there. Was, the room. There was a lot of Mila Nitties in that motherfucking yeah, I'm not gonna stick with the meme mugs. Yeah, you know I mean I'm like, not gonna agree with none of that. I don't know what you're talking about. Wifey was in that. That yeah, no, it was a lot, but anyway, but you know, Bodak Yellow came on, and I did vibe out with it because, like, it's a turn up song. But then I can also like be on a road trip and listen to some, uh, you know, "Give Me Murder, Give Me Death," like, you know. So you know, it, it depends on who you are. Yeah, you know I mean, it depends on your kinks. How do you? How do you? So how do you all discuss these these cases or instances? On is it coming? From, do you rate them based on? No, we just kind of talk about them and try to riff. I, I mean, I try to pick older ones Mm -hmm. so there's a little distance because we did our fourth episode we did this this kind of brutal family murder in connecticut in 2007 it's a little it was a little too fresh yeah them kids still running around they trying to pursue college degrees yeah like that so i yeah it's hard it's kind of a hard line to toe of like because you're not it's not like making fun of the victim or anything but it's just kind of trying to make make humor out of like you know one of the darkest things of about humanity, which is people killing each other. Well, I mean, if you look at comedy as like rooted in tragedy, what mm. is you know one of the darkest tragedies that we have? I mean, like, so you know, I mean, it's, it's kind of one of those things when you're looking at like parallels and like equivalents and spectrums or whatever. Like, you know, a, a lot of time when you're looking at logic and arguments, you're like, oh, you know, I'm gonna present this and then you magnify that mm-hmm. and if it still works on that magnified level like same thing in math if it works in like you know x equals two then it should it should also work in x equals two million and everything yeah. in between or whatever so when you're looking at something like comedy and you take it and say if it could work with this level of tragedy tragedy then can it work in the darkest form of tragedy yeah and that's i guess that's the experiment yeah, how have you? How's that? How's that experiment been working for it's you? It's like, fun. Are, sometimes we miss the mark a little bit, but then sometimes I don't know. Some of it is, it's some of it's hard, like really awful, but some of it's like long enough ago that you're like, that's fucking crazy. Like, and no one is alive that remembers any of that, so you can make fun of it. But how do you miss the mark with that? Because if you're listening to "Give Me Murder," yeah. "Give Me Death," if you if you made the yeah, choice are, to listen to this, like. What's over the top in that realm? Once you once you decide that you're willing to listen to this with the understanding that this is you know a comedic podcast about a true event, that's then a good where point. It, where, where where's your line going to be? I guess make it fun of the victim. Yeah. Okay. If you Unless, tune sometimes in, sometimes pieces no of shit get murdered. Yeah. Who kind of deserve it? Rarely, true. but yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. No, that's a good point because yeah, if people are it, it, it's in the title murder, so if they're probably on board if they're downloading it anyway. But I mean, I would imagine like there's a difference. Like if you tune in, you'll give it a shot. But like if it seems lowbrow and bullshit, right. then you're not gonna stay in for too long. Yeah, I mean, you're like okay. okay. And there's there's a couple. There's one I can't remember the name, but some podcast that I listen to that kind of t- like does that. Yeah, and it's like uh, that's, I didn't tune in for this. Yeah. you know, like, <laughs> I didn't tune in for this. Yeah, it is like yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I like I'm kind of twisted, but this is. But then sometimes it's just inherently funny. Like, mm. ju- I'll give a little taste. The one, uh, or one episode is about cannibalism in Germany. Mm. And it's fucking terrible. It's people eating each other. But there, you remember, th- like, 2000, early 2000s, that guy? It was, like, super famous internationally. The guy ate another guy. Was, there, there's was a, it a dude in Japan that got, like, extradited out? Like, Oh, no, that was, we actually did that one, too. We yeah. did two episodes <laughs> about cannibalism. But, <laughs> no, that yeah, that's another, that one's more famous. Fucked That's up way fucked because up. he murdered that girl and then ate her. Yeah. But this other one is like these dudes found each other on a website, and the one guy they it was mutual, like it was it was consensual. It the, was one, the one guy wanted to be eaten oh, and killed. Shit. He wanted to be killed and eaten. They this is God. This is like probably not your normal shit. But anyway, they uh, while he was still alive, they cut his dick off and they fried it up and ate it together. 
Why the fuck what? would you eat your own dick? Who not, but Why eat, would you what? eat another man's dick? So is Why that, the fuck? Sometimes eat a dick just took a whole what new is, meaning. What is me. what is that? Uh, what's what's the mercy killing called? Euthanasia? Is that a form of euthanasia? Is that what? It, am I, using I mean, a term? that's what the, like the court case was about. Is, is it, is like, it well, a term like he asked me to kind of yeah. you know? So guess, yeah. is, but you, know, you willful. ate the not you, but he <laughs> ate the man's dick. Like and he ate his own dick. The one guy. <laughs> that's no. I, Fuck eating another man's dick. The fact that you ate your own dick is like I think uh, that but is. Don't you always wonder? No. <laughs> Hell no. No. See now I know now. <laughs> How did now, they prepare okay. it? <laughs> here's here's the was deal. it baked? He actually was it fried. He was actually it grilled? he what fried the? it too much that it got burnt and it like was too. It was oh, too you rubbery. Were, you wasted good. So then dick? he fed it to his you're dog. Get, you, what the fuck? Yeah, he wasted. You? You're not gonna get this. He again. wasted his only dick. You're, yeah, you're not gonna get this again. He over this ain't a like this ain't a redo. You're not gonna go back yeah, down he, to the market. He, he overcooked over it. You gotta put that dick. on yeah. low. How do you even simmer? What's that? How do you just sit and watch your own dick get over fried? Like, he probably, fam, I'm cooking this like it's last supper. Hell like, yeah. I'm all into the season. Is all, oh, what the fuck? He fucked up. What? Yeah, I think you should have all all your shit ready to go if you're going to fry someone's yeah, dick. Yeah, you got to. Yeah. But like yeah, I said, that's, a, that's a low simmer in butter. And I'm making yeah. sure that it didn't go too quick because I'm not simmer, getting this yeah. chance again. Nope. If you burn my dick, now we got to eat your dick. Yep. That's it. That that I mean? That's it. You should have done that. <laughs> like, I mean, like, hey, bro. Sorry, I fucked your dick up. <laughs> Let's cut mine off. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's fair though, or it would be. But I hear they it's... ate his balls too, or they cut his dick off, but left his balls. It didn't. I think it was just the dick. I don't know. Like, ah, uh, why? I'm, see, this but, is how you get drawn into shit like that. Because it's fascinating. You gotta it's unpleasant. ask. Like, you have to ask follow up questions. Yeah, I need. I need info. Cause so what I, what I understand is that like human flesh tastes like pork. They call it long pork, long pig, long pig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. cause like it tastes like pork and it has like the texture or whatever. Like so, I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it definitely something that I've most thought people. About, like, well, I'm probably at a restaurant at some point. You know, I mean, cause I mean, there was there was a scientist that you know, like I I'd I read know. about. Probably that, human like, meat's gotten into something you've eaten at some oh, point. Oh shit! Somebody cut a finger off Anybody. and got ground up yeah. in and you didn't know about it. I don't know. I'm I mean, kidding. I'm probably. I hope not. I hope that's not true. I, with the amount of shit that we eat that find, winds up in our meat, like mm, that's why, like with all these new shit, they're like, "Did you know you were eating this?" I'm like, "I'm 35 years old. I've been eating it for 35 motherfucking years. I don't really give a Actually, fuck." Yeah, you're it's probably right. We've probably all eaten people. We've eaten people at some point. Yeah. yeah. Well, if you're sucks. a meat eater, you've eaten meat. Well, there. we've eaten people. That's uh. Figured that out. Give me murder not and eating my own dick. Give me murder that, and no, give me yeah. beef. Give me murder and give me beef. Mm-hmm. And that beef. is a porno. Uh, <laughs> give me beef. <laughs> that is wow. So how do how do you how do you know when you've done something poorly? You know what I mean, like, are you looking at? Because I know with like podcasts um, and just like you know the medium uh, that that we're in, it's hard to get feedback. Yeah, like instantly. You know I mean, right. like on stage, you know, like you know I mean, they oh, don't yeah, like yeah. you can For read sure, and react. Yeah. But when you're putting it out there, you might be waiting a couple of weeks before somebody maybe even just like sees you in person. Be like, yeah, I didn't like you know. So I like, just, I get like self conscious about each episode. I don't think we've crossed the line of like going too far. Mm. So, uh, so far, it's just some, like because when it is, you can feel it when you're talking about it. Like this is like for whatever reason, this one's like more serious or more recent. So like. Well, I guess you can't have any connection so like, to it at all. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. True. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, if it's if it's more, you know, if it involves children, that makes it way more mm. fucked up. And, like, you can't... You it, there's can't hard imagine. to draw... There's some things it's just hard to draw any comedy out of. Even if, you know, right. even if the nature of the podcast is trying to, like, make something dark funny, there's some things there's just yeah, nothing there. Yeah, I would imagine there. children are, are completely, yeah. you know, off base. But so as far as missing the mark, it's like sometimes we'll do like one that's like too serious, but we don't end up making fun of it. We just end up like talking about it. Well, I guess that you have the range or the the ability to do so, or the freedom rather yeah. to do so. Um, because again, you're tuning into that kind of podcast. You're really trying to hear about the actual event. People want to know the story, and you, yeah, and you want to. You're investing in. 
you know, a certain personality or a mixture of personalities discussing this event, but you're right. really trying to hear about the event. And if you consistently make those things funny, fine. But if it's something where you're just talking about how fucked up it is or that type of occurrence or how relevant that occurrence is, is to now, then I, I get it. But do you think that, so with that sort of podcast in this climate, in this social climate, mm-hmm. um, do you have to, well, where did you find, I guess, the, I don't, I, I'd be at a loss for words, but how did you decide, you know what, I can move forward with this in this climate? Because it feels like people are, everything you say is more scrutinized now. Yeah. You know I mean, like everything is scrutinized to a large degree. Like, so in order to introduce that type of podcast to the masses yeah. um, and be like, yo, I can still find a demographic that's into this. Did you, do you think it's more difficult now? Or do you think like if, if podcasting was a thing back in the day, it would have been more widely accepted? I think actually maybe it's more widely accepted now just because you know, because like, you guys know, obviously, we've been doing this for years now. It's like more personal or intimate, so people find it and then they can latch onto it. And um, where it's not like a TV show where it's like so many more people are going to see it. If they find you, they they like you, mm-hmm. or they they tell people about you because they like you. I forget what I was saying. So, with your comedy, do you ever find yourself trying to censor yourself in this new? comedic climate no i don't think well i don't i don't do any i it's naturally progressed a little bit like stand up like i don't i used to do all this dark shit but it's just i just talk more about my life mm-hmm. um but you know the the i understand yeah i'm understanding what you're saying about it is a different kind of it just seems it feels like a different climate now. yeah it just feels like everything's like for example i was uh i was watching super bad the other night it was yeah. on tv and i'm watching super bad and i'm like yo you could never release that movie nowadays because he's basically trying to date rape this girl yeah. and, and playing it off like he likes her. Like, he's trying to get her drunk so they can have sex. Like That is that is a wild, like, as I become more, you know, quote unquote woke or whatever, like, I start to listen, I, you know, I, I like, I listen and I watch, like, shit from our past mm-hmm. and I'm super aware of how, like, none of that shit. None like, of that. Super like, bad would not fly today. Yeah, like, yeah. it's like, oh, <laughs> shit, like, you know, like, looking at it now, I'd be like, ah, oh, that's, but, like, but it's weird because I have to match my current like understanding with my prior feelings of like this is a household thing that I grew up with and this is like I love this mu- movie I love this song I love this whatever but like now I'm like oh shit that was kind of like that was kind of shitty like and it brings you, you to a point where like are things hyper scrutinized now are they appropriately I, scrutinized like it, I, there's it's maybe weird. maybe a little of both but there's definitely I think that the um well, you're saying how it's—he's basically like it's date rape. He's, that's or, that's like his he plan. Want, he wants to date rape. That I think that has come into the like consciousness. Oh yeah, more. definitely. Now that's what I said. You couldn't put that out. Like he, his whole goal, his plan was to do that. And there's a large demographic or a fraction of men who have had that plan on any certain on any given night. And yeah, it wasn't and, thought and it was of like negatively. Find a joke about. Yeah, it was. Like it's like let's get her drunk so we can have consensual sex because when she's I mean it's like weird like now because we're we're you know people are speaking out about it more yeah. now it's like oh hell like, no. no that's actually not that consensual ain't to joke and about like yeah. what you doing like yeah, yeah just, I fucking I what would that come out like ten years ago or yeah, I don't super maybe bad, probably been yeah I, I fucking loved it and I haven't seen it since then so I didn't even like I was watching that, that didn't even register yeah, I'm like I didn't even, I'm trying to think like oh shit is that what that shit yeah, I didn't. That's even... what the whole movie was about, like trying to get liquor so he could sleep with a girl that he actually liked. Oh, that's right. Yeah, he was just trying to score. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, for I, that party. I, I, yeah, I guess it's. I guess there's degrees. Let's just let me just. There's degrees. It would this not shit. be and written be the, in that way today. Yeah, I, I, let me. Let me. I, no, it I will, would be today. I that will, would be rape. I will be. A, yeah, I will yeah. be a bad guy in the sense that, like, you know, I was. I was. You know, if I'm gonna give or like, like, I'm gonna try to create an, an atmosphere that is more conducive to sex whether that's alcohol or candles or music Ew. or her favorite song mm. or like yeah mm. i mean roses on a date like there's you know like if you're i don't know it, if that, that's gonna fly but day. like if i'm just being <laughs> like listen i'm trying to get her as stupid as i possibly can so that i can like conquer her in a, an inebriated state those are two different things well i think yeah, yeah i mean like yeah. if i'm just like hey if she's like hey you know da, 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 i'm gonna come over you got some beer I think I do a now. lot of people drink <laughs> drink before the first time they have sex with someone. Yeah. A lot of people drink before they do some shit that they may not have the courage or they may not 
feel but, like yeah, they would allow themselves to do. There's a huge difference between like having a couple shots and a couple beers and like I'm going to get her fucked up. Yeah, well, right. Like, so the, the yeah, form- the, the intention is where it's at. It's like yeah. I'm going to get you fucked up so I can take advantage but of you. But we're right. scrutinized Foul. to the point where But if you're asking me for some intention drinks bar, almost becomes an afterthought. Yeah. Like if I say a joke on stage, my intention mm. is to be funny, to bring light to it. But people sit there now and be like, "Nah, bro, you can't, you can't say that, regardless of your intention." Yeah, no. and 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 so with a podcast like "Give Me Murder and Give Me Death" or with your style on stage, mm-hmm. you know, I find it, I find it almost admirable in the sense that you have the courage to go up there and be like, "All right, these are the things that I find amusing. I don't, I don't, you know, I don't mean that." In any negative way, disparaging marks, remarks about the individuals involved or to discredit anyone's struggle in any aspect. But I find these things amusing about certain things. And here it is. Take it or leave it. And people take that shit a, a lot. Like, you've yeah, done very well. I, well, thanks. Yeah. I, I mean, I, and I do try to, like, be sensitive to that kind of th- shit. I don't know if you and sensitivity go together. I well, well, I, th- I think I think it he does. Has, it, I think he has had probably the best marriage from insensitivity because if you are going to talk about a taboo subject, like even like when I look at folks that are talking, you know, when I look at jokes and shit that goes sour and people are like, you know, up in arms about. As a comedian, I'm looking at like, you know, is it a well crafted joke? What is your intention? Like, I'm looking at it from that, you know, that respect. And if you're gonna talk about it, like even my, myself as a black, you know, comic or whatever, there's certain shit. If I'm going to talk about race, if I'm going to talk about, you know, whatever it is that I'm talking about if it's going to be controversial i need to make sure that one like i know exactly what i'm trying to say right. and two i'm saying it in a in a in a clever enough way that makes it worth it yeah i mean like if i'm going to go to that well yeah. i, I it, mean because if you're just doing just it, a cheap joke if it's like, a cheap joke and that's the thing i'm like if if i see somebody that says some controversial shit and it's just a cheap joke i'm like eh, he probably shouldn't what? why did you do that yeah, yeah i mean but like if it's well crafted and it has like a different you know then like yeah, yeah. if it toes that line yeah, so I mean, like being somebody that's going to say that and and have the success in your career that you've had, you have to know how to toe that line because I mean, like I haven't seen any Alex Apula like rallies, like yeah, yeah I mean, you don't. Uh, do you have Do you have a Reddit thread where people are like <laughs> the the one the closing joke I used to have, which is just uh, I play in this really awesome band. It's called Young Adolescent Men Getting Fucked Hard, Young Adolescent Boys Getting Fucked Hard by Older Men. And then the punchline is Google us. I fucking love that fucking nice. joke. Oh, so, it's like one it's of like my an, favorite. It's really like an internet joke, but it, like yeah. Tim Ross, made, we were going on tour in June. He he, you know, tried to promote it on Reddit, and he made a, a stand up shot. That's a subreddit where it's just like a shot of someone doing stand up on mm. on stage and their joke next to him, and it got like a crazy amount of upvotes, like the most that day or some shit. Um, and I got like five Twitter follows out of it. It was great, but um. <laughs> But then I was reading through the comments. There was hundreds of them, and some of them are just like super snarky and shitty. Like norm, oh, oh, so cool, normalizing pedophilia. Yeah, and it's you know there wasn't most most of them were just like normal bland comments or whatever. Like yeah, this is funny, or most of them weren't shitty. Mm. But I don't know. You 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 see people say that from an outside perspective, like about other people's jokes, and then like kind of pissed me off. You know when it's your own. Thing. I was like, it's a fucking throwaway one liner. Is that is it normalizing pedophilia? It's about pedophilia. It's like a it's a hard line to toe for sure. But I don't know. I also wrote it like five fucking years ago. It's I don't know. You yeah, know, I mean, like I don't I, even I, know what to. I, you know, I I, I get it because I mean, I I would do jokes and people come to me off the you know after I got off and you know they would laugh like oh you know I enjoyed that one or whatever like but I didn't like that one. And the thing that pissed me off is because like I'm making fun of everybody. Like I'm making fun of myself. I'm making fun of you know these type of people that like I'm making fun of everybody. Mm-hmm. And you liked when I was making fun of everybody, but that one category that you chose is off the limits. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Like, well, yeah. You know, there's that, and then like, um, you know, like. I, you know, I, I, I would have my feelings about other people's jokes or whatever, and having that ridicule, especially on Reddit. I mean, it's fucking super tough. Oh, they go hard. They go super. Any ham. well, Reddit is just one big ass thread of comments. It's the Any worst part of the internet. Terrible. Oh man, it's, and it's, that's what Reddit is. Yeah, it's fucking terrible. And like, like you said, I mean, like when you. That that's how I started to kind of develop like the intention side of things or whatever. It's like, uh, you don't you're taking this out of context. You're trying to like you know something like, and then you have to like, is this worth like you know, like so you know I had a joke and it was a it was a it was a masturbation joke, but it was disguised as a rape joke or whatever. It was like mm-hmm. you know. Uh, uh, 
you know, like, uh, uh, what was it? It was, um, you know, um, um, like rapist, like, <laughs> like is a, it? Like, that's it, a long ass. Um, it, it, Buzzy's gonna cut all a that lot shit. of um. <laughs> Buzzy, you, you go cut that up. But like, um, <laughs> um count. another one. Uh, but no, it was basically like you know, like uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yo, the um count is up to like thirteen right now. <laughs> but like, it like is it rape if you know you decided to like if you if you decided <laughs> that you didn't want to touch yourself, but it happened anyway. Yeah, I mean, like, and it, it plays with the. Did you, you say know, um that many times before you touched I definitely yourself? Did before. <laughs> like, mm, uh, uh, <laughs> should I do it? The, uh, the ums are the setup. <laughs> That's the foreplay. Yeah. yeah, but like, you know, it was it was a <laughs> masturbation joke disguised as a rape joke, but like, people just took the rape out of it, and I'm like, you know, I got off get off stage, and I'm like, you know, the only person that's actually getting like, you know, brutalized in this is is myself. Like, there's nobody, like, there's no harm. Nobody else is in this. Nobody, mm-hmm. like, I didn't even mention another person. This is all me or whatever. And I'm like, eh, you know, I didn't like it. And then for a minute, I like, I bucked against it. I was like, ah, no, fuck that. Like, it doesn't, you know what I mean? Like, but after a while, I was just like, is it worth keeping it given right, right. the, is it? Yeah. you know? So, I mean, you, you, you come to that. That just kind of happens naturally. Yeah. yeah, when you find you get that much backlash against it, you're like, well, what's the point? Yeah, is like, it, is it worth like, is this a fight that you know, this is a hill that I want to die on? Yeah. Well, in writing, in writing jokes or material in that vein, like, how much thought do you have to put into what the backlash would be? Um, how much consideration of the backlash do you have to give? Like, if you're writing a joke, you know your intention, mm-hmm. um, but you also know it could be received in a certain way, and and. It's not necessarily ridiculous for someone to receive a joke. And I know with the whole I'm in an uproar about a masturbation joke about whatever. All right. I see you you going hard on that one. But there are some subjects, especially with if you're talking about murders or stuff like that, like people can buck against it and you can be like, I, I see why you would do that. Like, mm. at what point do you in the writing process? Are you just like, you know what? Nah. Or it's like, well, I got to just put this shit out there and see how it comes. Uh, that's hard to say. I definitely think about it more now. I just kind of, over time, naturally developed a, an awareness of it. Because, I, yeah, I used to do fucked up jokes that were awful just for the sake of being awful. But I was only like a year or less into stand-up. So the, the learning curve hadn't quite hit yet. Of like, why, I mean, why are you saying that? Some of the, I, don't, I really don't remember. Because I, if I had uh, and uh, like an example of a fucked up joke. I used well, to no, you say wouldn't it, say it here because we'd have to have Buzzy uh, yeah, edit it <laughs> cut out. it out. But <laughs> I, yeah, I can't remember some of the shit I used to, but it definitely used to be more for just shock value. Yeah, can you get caught up in that with that too? Because the shock value does add value yeah. to the set that you're doing. Because earlier on, I would for sure. Earlier yeah. on, when I was starting stand up, but yeah. you're very well written. So I, I mean, at some point, you realize how well written you are. And then you like, because you're the only comedian I've ever u- heard use the term varnishes. <laughs> <laughs> like I haven't, I haven't figured out a way to throw varnishes in a in a joke as a tagline. But there you go. To throw I mean, some weird words in. I, I think like when you when you come into it though, like you're doing the, uh, you're you're in the bars. And you're just like trying to get the attention. You gotta like, and you're coming in an environment where you're just fighting the crowd. Oh, for sure. That was get, I, I used to yell a lot, and the yelling came from. Uh, Smiling Moose has been gone for how many years now? But yeah, that, like three, four years. Yeah, that. And you know how it would get like. And I think I was on at one a.m. one time. You know, Smiling Moose is the the bar in the South, South Side, South, yeah. and there used to be an open mic comedy open mic there Tuesday nights. I was on at one a.m. and just not a goddamn person was paying attention. Nobody so was, I was there. Like, there was a game on in the background. What if like I just twenty other comics oh, waiting yeah. for you to get off stage? Like there was a few people like up front. Like yeah. you know what I mean, and, and that was the big mic, so there'd be like a ton of comics. Yeah. If you're up late, and I was just like, I should just yell, and it fucking worked. So it, and I did that for a while, and I yelled and paced, and it, it gets people to like look at you. Yeah, but I've since said I pretty much just stand in place now. It's like a lot calmer on stage well i mean yeah i mean like as you you know as you develop you realize you don't have to yeah i kind of didn't even notice it 
Well, you're on stages now where there are crowds there to see you as right, opposed right. to... Right, You don't have to do that shit. Yeah, I mean, we're not doing the same shows where, like... I mean, like even when, you know, after from the open mic to your first shows as any comic, you're going to go from open mic, that's how you get on, and then you're going to yep. go to, like, these bar shows where you're kind of, like, just doing some, like, free work or, like, very low pay or whatever, but, like, you're still... People aren't there to see you. Yeah, yeah I mean, You still like, might have to... Yeah, I mean, kinda... just kind of, like, you know, or whatever, but then you get to a point where, like, people are coming to see comedy... And you mm-hmm. can't keep doing the same right. you know, thing that you were doing then because it's like, look, we don't need that much sensory overload. Like, yeah, we're that's here. a good point. You know I mean, um, but I, like, I, I love, I love your progression or whatever because, like, even you know, in that vein, like, you have such a unique, um, you know, skew on comedy or whatever, and uh, you know, taking it to those limits, building the the crowd that you have, and then develop from there and not get stuck in like say a character or a certain thing that people came to see me like you've been able to expand upon you know yeah. your your base so yeah. and and not all of your comedy is rooted in you know death and all that so you yeah. do that you like this <clears throat> yeah and, and it shows a softer more well written well not even more well written but with the softer side you can notice or the average fan can notice the thought put into it yeah um now was that the I guess was that the driving driving I guess process behind it or how how did how, you like this come about? It came about because me and uh, Dustin Dowling, who I do it with, who's like Dustin, have his fingers in a lot of shit. He does, yeah, yeah he does. It, it, he's Friedrich in that, um, like the guy behind the camera. Sometimes he's on camera. We, <laughs> I just wanted to do something. We basically just came here to fuck around. I did another like two other characters too, but I like <laughs> doing the German accent and also you know like the trope of like a german like there's like a nazi that's like not funny anymore like yep. a german not because there's actual nazis in our there are actual shitty, Nazis shitty, shitty country now. but you know like uh, if there was a german character and things they'd be like super hard-edged and like militant and so i think it's like way funnier to just do like a yeah. silly fucking can, can, weirdo yeah i mean i just i think is i just want to call the irony that like germany is denouncing nazis and our president yeah. is uh you know big enough he's about. okay so, with it. He like, like if i heard a german accent i probably would feel safer yeah. in the there's they're some, probably not a nazi range i saw some news <laughs> news story where some american obviously a fucking white guy some this white dude in his 40s he was an american tourist he was drunk and he did a like a Heil hitler at some i don't know the reichstag or something he did a Heil hitler at, at some monument in germany it wasn't even a you know because obviously they got rid of all the fucking nazi monuments <laughs> but people people Imagine beat that. him up the german people around him beat him up wow for doing it yeah well yeah, they, they, yeah. as they should have yeah as yeah. they should have but the the Nazi but here the in America, high-ranking Nazi dude, I forget his name or what. I don't know if he's the head of the neo Nazi movement, or whatever. He like bigged up Trump. He's like, yeah, man, what he said, he didn't, you know, he didn't make it specific to us. Oh yeah, no, no, it, it was, was all like, good. Like, they got, he got like, he got he got beat up in Germany for saluting Nazis, but here he's got motherfuckers on Twitter defending his right to free speech. It's, it's both sides. Yeah, both. Stuff. Yeah, no, I'm mean, I'm all about again. I don't know if I mentioned uh, it on the last podcast, but I'm all about punching Nazis. So if there's Nazis out there, you know, feel free. I've seen so many posts from comics like show. like here's why you shouldn't punch a Nazi, and da da da, and like I don't know. I think I'm kind of for it. I just I like the, yeah. I mean, well, you got to look at like, they, they go alt right, alt left. One it, the alt the, left's not real. Uh, yeah, that's not, not a real all. term. And in any way, shape, or form, this yeah. is a thing that you've made up. And two, you know, alt right is like you know the right. Like and the reason they call it the alt left is because they're violent. But like yeah. the alt right is is just like you know they they have all these different values attached to alt right. But violence has always been a part of the right. Well, anything that they saying is probably going to lead to violence. You can't, yeah, you can't they always be, be saying non, the shit that non-violent. they say and it just be peaceful. Yeah, exactly. And that's why like you have the the when they say the alt left, what they mean is the violent left, but you had to give the left the violent left a name whereas yeah, all most people, people on the right up. side typically fall into the violent category. Yeah. I mean, they yeah, kind of, yeah. you know, they So what are you they, what are you going to do? Just completely sometimes violence unfortunately has to be met with violence. Keep if trying. they're 
yeah, if they're in their nature violent, most times you violence keep, you has keep, to be met with you violence. Can, yeah. You could keep yeah. turning that cheek. This ain't the motherfucking yeah. magic. But eventually they'll, they'll cartoon. Then they'll just win. They'll just gas. Ain't them nobody coming up here to be violent towards you, and you gonna say something that changes their mind. That yeah, shit yeah, don't yeah. happen. No, like, but no, you're not. Yeah, you're not gonna change their mind. They're still gonna be pieces of by shit. Someone they're like, yo, give me your money. Like, listen, brother, I got kids, all right. And maybe what you should do is focus. No, motherfucker, give me. I'm not. Listen, trying to like, oh, oh, you know when you put it that way. Yeah, no, that's just going to. Make the violence happen yeah, fast. listen, faster. Man. Yeah, <laughs> listen. That picture op where they put the little flower in the gun barrel or whatever—that's a great picture, but that's not real life. Like that's I not nine, nine, nine ninety-nine point nine like, times out of a fucking hundred. There, there's so much. They're more. blowing that fucking flower back into yeah. your head. You know I mean? Non-violence like is technically un-American, considering that what is it? The Second Amendment gives us the right yeah, to, bear to bear arms, arms yeah. and we're not bearing these arms to be like, listen, brother, I don't know. use I mean, these tools. No, you, you know how we Facebook shoot is. You if and you like, come in our yard. Like that's what America is. There's been so many. Uh, all Facebook is is just fucking comment threads of of people posting about that kind of shit mm-hmm. now. But the one I, I I'd like to try and do it justice and 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 speak about it properly. But I did see one super intelligent argument about why you know it should be okay to punch a Nazi. It was I think because they are terrible. Well, yeah. People. Well, they're pieces of shit. I think it's just fine <laughs> and anyway. And they would punch but you. Not I, just that they're terrible people, but they would. Oh yeah, punch they'll you. punch you. So yeah. you just want to yeah. take it. It's the do unto others. The golden rule is one like, or at least punch more. them so they don't punch other people. Or but well, the, I think I think the guy who who wrote this was Jewish, and he was saying like how people would criticize the the Jews for in in Nazi Germany for like why didn't you do anything, speak yeah. up or like or do anything. And now it's like, okay, they are actually here, but now people are saying, don't do anything. Yeah, when they, like somebody asked me the other day, it was like, would you kill like baby Hitler or whatever? And it's like, you know, a lot of people be like, yeah, I kill baby Hitler. And it's like, well, there's like baby Hitlers out here, yeah, right, right now. Like, are you gonna punch them? Because we're not, we're not talking about you like murdering these motherfuckers. Would you, would you punch them in the jaw? And like, ah, no, maybe like pieces of sand. So is that what you're talking about? Like with like you know the Nazis? Like, oh, just give peace a chance. Like you would, is that what is that what America did with the Nazis the I mean, first time? Did maybe they give peace a chance. Yeah, they, like, no. yeah, they did at first. They were like, listen, man, you keep fucking shit up. Mm-hmm. We all we getting a lot of calls about. Gabe. Yeah, we're getting a lot of calls about you. Be like, yo, I mean, maybe you want to chill out. Like, I mean, before we have to come about. through, and they kept pushing. It was like, all right, now we got to spank you. Yeah, that's what these motherfuckers. If you come out to a rally and you're like, yeah, I mean, you're asking to be spanked. Yeah, and I mean, and maybe okay, maybe not just go and a straight up attack them. But if you see them even begin to pick their arm up, yeah, then you can be violent. I mean, I, like, I, I, yeah, I mean, you, you look at it like. And then you got to go. I mean, we can go on because like you're looking at like degrees of revolution and the whole now yeah. or whatever. But if you're putting out a message that, you know, is going to incite violence, like I look at a message that is going to place myself and my people in a near death situation as violence towards me and my people. And I mean, if you're you're preaching something that's going to, you know, affect my community, my neighborhood, my like my country, even like in the long run, that's violence towards me. Yeah, you know I mean, like uh, there are plenty of ways. There's plenty of technology. We as a as a, as a human you know, in existence, we have the ability for Nirvana. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know I mean, like in a, in near, much better than where we're at now. But there's a lot of forces that go against that. If you're using something as simplistic as I don't want you to even be in the same country as I am, here's, here's that's extreme. You know, so like, yeah, if you're spreading that shit, yeah, I'll, here's the thing. Yeah, that's fair. If you go into Walmart buying a bunch of tiki torches and mm-hmm. walking around with the motherfuckers, you're not. Preaching nothing systemic. You're not talking about all right. Let's systematically, you know, subject these people to something. You talking about forcibly doing some shit. Yep. So if you're doing that for if you're if you're preaching forcible, then I have no choice but to respond in that manner. Like yeah. th- this is something that you've. Created. That's true. If they are just if they're straight out saying it, like yeah, we're gonna be violent. Then yeah, it's like that episode. Remember my brother and me that came on Nickelodeon, like the little black. Uh, show that was like one season. I remember that. He was like, hit me. They were me. Charlotte Hornets fans. Yeah, he was like, yeah. hit me. That's all right. Hit me. He was, yeah. was like, hit me. Hit me. And the motherfucker hit him. Yeah. And that's what you doing if you walking around with a tiki torch saying, fuck you people. It's like, then you asking to get whatever. Like, well, the, here, here's here's my crazy. thing though, also though. And, and like, you know, somebody was like, oh, well, you know, if you're inciting violence and violence is going to come upon you. I just want to let anybody know if you are going to punch a Nazi, then you got to be ready to get punched yourself. Well, yeah, I mean, like, I mean, like, it might not be in raising that swastika, inciting violence. Again, but what I'm saying is, (laughs) what I'm saying is, if I throw a punch, 
I fully expect for a punch to come back at me. Ooh, That's no just question. it. Like I don't it, that, like I don't care what like what the reason is, even if it's self defense. Yeah, don't. I'm getting if I punch somebody, I'm gonna expect the expect the punch back. Yeah, so if you're gonna take the violence, it. be ready for violence to yam me. And that's why you have people that are trained and people that are willing to do that. And I say that if I punch a motherfucking Nazi, I expect one of his boys maybe to come from the side. Yeah, I mean, that oh, might be they, a thing. We in here. They ain't, yeah, they ain't yeah, with I mean, the fair like, one. So, they ain't you never know, with the fair don't, one. Don't go out there and expect to punch a Nazi and then, you know, like, cry like, oh, my God, da, da, da. Yeah, I will say that, you know, like, I understand why you punch that motherfucker. I understand that your yeah, your, your, your cause is just, but it's going to come back through. So, you know, like, but anyone there? We tried to talk about some light and shit. Just got like <laughs> got Damn, real... it's, it's, a, it's a heated time. It's, it's hard. It's hard not to. It's getting crazy. It's heated. Like on on because it came up on our podcast. I don't know when it's going to come out, but we're doing one on Jonestown, which is a whole fucked up thing. And uh, like the Kool Aid. Yeah, 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 it's actually off-brand Kool Aid. That's something. We <laughs> was uh, it's, was it's, it the uh, it wasn't, Weilers? The Weilers. It was not Kool Aid brand. If you don't know what Weilers is. Turn it was like Flavor Aid or something. <laughs> the 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 clumps. Yeah, but Jim <laughs> oh, Jones was like, mad. you go to your auntie house and they got Weilers package. You'd be like, man, it's all misty it's ass, shit. cloudy. <laughs> <laughs> shit ain't gonna taste like nothing. No, yeah, it was, it was fake Kool Aid. It was Flavor Aid or some shit. Yeah, but that he, runs deep with us. Jim J- Jim Jones was uh, he, he. It's like super. It's super interesting because he was fucking crazy and he caused most. Of, it wasn't actually a mass suicide. A lot of them were murders. Like people were like forcibly fed the Kool Aid. Oh, really? Yeah. There, some of it was suicide, but it was, I mean, three hundred of them were kids. Three hundred out of the nine hundred some. So like, mm. kids aren't gonna fucking kill themselves with. Well, I mean, if you tell them it's Kool Aid, I thought like, they would just. Yeah, I, that's it, what I thought it was. I thought it was uh, the story that's told is that they just got duped into thinking it was something. Oh no, they knew they were all dying. Oh, they shit. they knew it, what exactly yeah. was going on. Yeah, and a lot of them didn't want to because you know, a lot of people yeah, don't want to die. Minute, you're like, ah, yeah. you know what? I thought, but, <laughs> but what, what's interesting about him is like he like was uh, pretty progressive as far as like um, uh, diversity. And inclusion of like all ethnicities and races, and and that part of him was good, but then um, so then that got us talking about Charlotte, like Charlottesville. So then what 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 was it that like ran him to to he was just like a, side, a megalomaniac, like. he, and he had severe paranoia, and he had to have some other kind of mental mm. because yeah, there was good things about him. He was you know he would preach for uh, the poor and. Um, for everyone to be equal, like, and he, yeah, because anybody can die. Yeah, anybody can die. So and he worked with, yeah, <laughs> yeah, he worked with the NAACP. He did some good things, but he did. He had like an actual messiah complex, and that's where mm. shit really went south. Yeah, no, I mean, I, uh, <laughs> and and the thing with like, yeah, I mean, that's I mean, it always goes south if <laughs> yeah. you have a messiah yeah. complex. And I, and I think like you know, in, in that same like vein with the podcast or whatever, like. You're looking at like understanding some of it. Yeah. You know I mean, like you clearly have a, a a knowledge of what led to those events, right? Yeah. And like the thing is, is is when you look at tragedies, like you know, mur- same things like murder, or whatever, you automatically just want to be like, this person did this thing, so they're a bad person, so that's what it is. Let's throw yeah, stones, kill them, or whatever, and then forget that. about it. And it's like, no, but like, let's try to figure how out happen? how this happens yeah. so that yeah. I can prevent this. In the future. And like a lot of people feel like trying to understand somebody is excusing them. Or you know sympathizing I mean? with. Or sympathizing. Exactly. And they think, and people like confuse understanding with sympathy. And it's yeah. like, I don't sympathize no. with these mass murderers. But they but, did it. And if you just write them, like, it's going to keep happening. Yeah. So better to try to understand it and possibly prevent even one instance from happening. Yeah, but then, in order to do that, you have to talk about it. Yeah, you have yeah. to like, and a lot of people don't like. And it's it. uncomfortable. It's, it's right. uncomfortable. It's so like, yeah. you know, it, and that's what taboos are. Taboos are the things that you, you know, uncomfortable to talk about. So let's not talk about it, and then they fester. Well, yeah, because taboo is not about your viewpoint. It's it's the fact that you're willing to express yeah. any viewpoint on it outside of the accepted. Mm-hmm. Yeah, any any inclination or looking into something that's like, come on, fam. 
we know that this shit is wrong. Like any, like if somebody came and said, "Yo, so and so was a, a mass murder. He shot up a school." And you are like, "Yeah, but you know, like his upbringing was a little like motherfuckers gonna look at you like fuck his upbringing." Yeah, yeah. Some just, but you kind of got to shut off. But you kind of got to be like, "Well, the environment." What? You know what I yeah. mean? And like for us, yeah. like as black men, we know this all too well because. We have these preconceived notions about us. Be like, well, look at how, look. It's all like old dog said it best. A minute to society. Like if God loved us, why he put us here? It's yeah. all fucked up around here. Yeah. Like if it's all fucked up about where I'm coming up, then how the fuck I'm gonna come out and be great? Now there are people who come out of that and are fantastic philanthropists, educators, whatever, whatever. But they had to know, jump over so many more roadblocks. It's also exactly. recognized in in people celebrating them. It's recognized that they came well, through all well, that shit. And, and the thing is, well, sometimes it's recognized, and like sometimes it's skewed, and it's like, oh, well, if they can do it, then why can't everybody, everybody else? Yeah, yeah. And like, and and even some of those people that get to that, that confuses like, the narrative. Yeah, of of what actually is going. And on. what it is is like, no, like a lot of people will be like, well, if he can do it, anybody can do it. And that shouldn't be the narrative. The narrative yeah. should be, how can we eliminate anybody all these hurdles? Yeah, yeah. That they that had to get exists. through in order to get here, and then when and on the, on the flip side, when a you know a serial killer, somebody that like, how do we eliminate all these things that mm-hmm. led them here? And like you said, when you talk, start talking about like, oh well, like, uh, well yeah, I could get it if I grew up in a cage for the first eight years of my life, and then I was fed scraps, and I wasn't touched ever, and like you know I was in rural wherever the fuck, and then you let me out, like I might kill a motherfucker. I yeah. don't know. There's people with unfortunate stories like that, and then there are some people like that that just like cannot be saved. It it's a horrible story. They just got to be kept away from yeah, everyone. I don't, I don't, and it I'm sucks. Not, I'm not against oh. punishment. You know what I mean, like yeah. somebody that does something that's terrible, punish them. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I mean, yeah. but at the same time, I want to know how you got, I want to have a conversation with you. I want to understand how yeah, you do yeah. this. Yeah, yeah. It's because people will just shut off and be like, oh, they did something terrible. Yeah, they did. No one's disagreeing with that part of it. But you look into it and un- try to understand why because it's not always uh, so simple as just like, oh, well, they're an evil person. I mean, evil is like a, Strange, like nobody's born evil. Yeah, you know I mean, nobody's looking at a baby and like he's just like spewing head spinning. Like that's not you know those are movies. Like yeah. most babies are like, oh, that's cute. Well, yeah, I think most most evil will come from circumstance to a certain extent. Yeah, I mean, obviously there is there's humane a humane component where I'm like, all right, look, yeah, these things were fucked up. You know, I, I wish these things were better. But, you know, you ain't have to handle it like that, you know, just as a human, yeah. whatever. But, like, if you can find it in one aspect of life, then it probably carries over to others. So, for example, me, um, growing up in an inner city, I never looked at every drug dealer as a bad person. Nah. It's illegal. What you're peddling is not positive for these individuals who take it. Now, if you're selling weed, I'm cool with you. you good. you good person. Yeah. But, like, if you're selling crack, like... You know, it's fucked up. You're selling crack. Like, you know crack isn't good. You know the people are willing to pay for it. You're coming from a circumstance where you might need to do that, whatever, whatever. Like, I don't think that you inherently are a terrible person. If you do some other shit like murder, yeah, I'm going to be like, that's fucked up. But then I have to look at what are the circumstances Mm -hmm. that led to you Mm -hmm. thinking that this was even an option. Murder is not an option for me unless you're trying to murder me. Right. Yeah, that's trying to murder point. me or my family. Yeah. There's no situation I'm like I gotta murder this motherfucker. Doesn't yeah, matter we'll where you came from. It. The murder, it just can't like. Yeah, whereas it, like dealing crack, yeah, it's not good, but you can understand and the, be like, okay, th- yeah, that's not a good thing to do. I understand why you did it, and if you it's get, just a decision, everybody makes a choice. Everybody it, makes what the best choice. The murder you can't come yeah. come back from. Nah, yeah. I can. You can. You feel right. me? Like yeah, people yeah, been yeah. part OJ getting out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, well, like we, you could come back. We come back. we we make the yeah. best decisions possible given the circumstances and the knowledge that we have, like you know, leading up to that. But like for me, you know, when I look at the moral, there's so much gray and there's very very it thin is. borders of black and white. And like honestly, for out. me, looking at it the way I gauge people is the golden rule, and it's do unto others. Yeah, you know I mean, like, and if oh, yeah. I do something that I would not want, and we're all hypocrites in that in that regard. Yeah. Hypocrite is nothing but somebody that doesn't abide by that. We all do shit that. We would would be like ah, I would hate it if it was done to me and sure. like you know so when I gauge actions I'm like I can understand why you did that but if you did it and you wouldn't want it done to you then I'm able like for me that's my one kind of like it like, goes back to the original point it's not necessarily me agreeing with you it's I need to understand 
where this comes from. And then maybe I don't look at you as, oh, this was a this this ain't like Cersei we spoke about her last, you know, whatever on Game of Thrones, where you just like, yo, she just evil. Like people mm-hmm. just look at it like she just evil. There's some people who it, they may be driven, been driven to evil to mm-hmm. a certain extent, and mm-hmm. doesn't make what you did less evil. Doesn't mean that I agree with you as a person, but I need to stop this next motherfucker from, yeah. from yeah, feeling yeah, like learn, that's got to yeah, happen. Like, I need it. to stop this dude, this little dude who's coming up that's going through the same shit you went through. Yeah. I need to approach him in a different fashion so that he don't resort to what you resorted to because we can't change what you did. Yeah, or like what you're saying about. Like someone dealing crack, a lot of people are just like lock them up, throw away the key. Like, why are they doing that? What Give can we what, what can we do to make their situation better so they don't? That's not a good option for them. Yeah, I mean, like there there are certain rehabilitative or rehabilitative. Or I don't know what the fuck the word is because it's the second podcast of two. Yeah. Um, but there's certain things that you can do with someone with that sort of mindset. Or that willingness to put themselves on the line for the betterment of. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you got to understand an individual, and I'm not saying every murderer has a, a reason or a legit reason, but every murderer had a reason. It, yeah, and some... if you find that the reason is this is a fucked up person, then fine. Yeah. But if you find that, okay, this is something that I can use to help someone else, then do it. And I don't think you're wrong for trying to figure that out. No, no um, I agree. You know, it's just hard. Like, even me sitting here trying to discuss it is difficult. I'm like, damn. What? Yeah. Oh, like, wifey might be thinking I'm cool with murder, like, but it's, it's not necessarily the case. And again, I applaud just your courage to to approach these things, especially like with comedy, man. Like, you deal with so much with comedy just because I can come in having a great day. I'm about, I feel like I'm about to have a great set. And I can just have a crowd full of motherfuckers who just had a bad day. Yep. <laughs> like, it doesn't matter I don't sometimes. know. I don't know what the fuck y'all been going through. Like, if we getting together for X, Y, and Z, you know, you might have you might have bought these tickets when you had a good day, and then the day is a fucked up yeah. day. You just like, lost well, your job. I bought our, them, so I got to come. Our 100th episode was the fucking yes. Saturday. Somebody had a bad after day. After Trump won the presidency. Uh, yes. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> we scheduled this, like, four months ago. Yeah. And Hillary was hot. Yeah. And no one was, actually thought he was going to fucking nobody win. Nobody thought he was going to win. And then he got elected on Tuesday. We had to do DVE on Thursday. Uh, and then we had to have John Fetterman, Baron Batch, and Rick Seaback like in a live audience and it was tight. on Saturday. <laughs> like it was, you know what I mean? Like you, you don't, <laughs> we wasn't expecting that shit. Yeah. So, like you don't you know can't. what the overall mood is going to be. And so. When you approach the subject matter that you choose to, I mean, you got to make sure like you on point yeah. with everything. Try to. And I, I feel like I feel like and what I kind of, I guess, like learned from you, like watching it or whatever. One, it was a switch. And I didn't realize like the first time I watched it, I was, you know, I was like, man, who, do, you know, what the fuck is this? And about halfway through about like two minutes in, I was like, oh, I get it. You know what I mean, like and then and like enjoyed it or whatever and then i didn't fully realize it until like i got off and then i saw you speaking afterwards was like oh shit it's like i mean it's a switch it's a thing yeah um but like uh Same. what i've learned is is like and watching you perform or whatever because you have that you get into a lot of crowds that like um are mixed and you have to like you know, and 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 afterwards you seem more or less like in your set, unshaken by that, like yeah, you know I mean, you go in and you do it, and like I've had, I've watched, I've watched crowds where like the person on the left of me is like, what the fuck, and the person on the right of me is like, hell fucking yeah, you mm-hmm. know what I mean, and then I watch other people that are like mixing back and forth, like yeah, fuck yeah, and then like wait, what the fuck, yeah, you know what I mean, like, but and if you're doing that, you have to have a resolve that like. I'm in this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to, yeah, I mean, make the best of it or whatever, and then gauge afterwards and, and move forward. And, like, because a lot of people abandon it. If they're not getting a good reaction yeah. in the first minute, they're off. Like, they're like, yeah, I mean, they're just, all right, well, let me just kind of, like, or whatever. But, like, you go through and you do it, and it. I never I never saw, like, like cracks. I never see, like, cracks in that, which is it's pretty amazing. Like, I mean, to, to see on stage, because most – Folks, I mean myself included, I get like, man, I'm about five minutes into that, and they ain't, you know what I mean, I'm be like, hey, a little, you know, I've learned to be better at that or whatever. But yeah. like, that was a, that, that was a progression. That definitely, like, when I when it used to be more intense, the actual act on stage, yeah, I would just, I didn't even think about it that much. I would just commit to it and be like, well, I'm, I'm doing it. I'm doing these jokes, and yeah, sometimes 
always like one or at least one or two people are going to like it. But then you know how it is. Like I, a lot of times I've seen in my set, you see people smiling. And you're like, all right, they're in it, but they're afraid to laugh. Uh, yeah. And if no one else is laughing, they're not going to laugh. So the whole room's fucking weird. Yeah. And uh, that that's like the most frustrating. I was like, it's just one of you laughs and it can open up and it's yeah. fine. And be like, and and real and like, cause you know, most people realize it's, it's uh, some people don't, some people think I'm just like a fucking huge creep, but like most people realize it's an act. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they're still like, you know, maybe they'll be sitting with their significant other or group of friends and they're not laughing. So they don't want to laugh even though they like it. It's a weird thing. Yeah, no, that is something in comedy. And I like, I, try to explain to people all the time because like when i first got on stage i was wasn't as cognizant of the crowd so i wasn't as cognizant of those people that were like silently laughing and like a lot of like sometimes the room is involved like if it's not as well lit then yeah. you can't see some of those people that might be in right. the back that are enjoying it or smiling and shaking their and head you think it's but going not, bad yeah, but it's actually it's going like not terribly. bad yeah and like or even in the, if the room isn't as audible for the crowd laughter like because i know that like I, i'll be in the are real yeah the acoustics yeah, like i'll I'll be in the back and I'll hear a bunch of laughter from the crowd and the comic will get off stage and be like, oh man, I fucking like fucking bombed. And I was like, what are you talking about? They were cracking up over here, yeah. but they couldn't hear it. So like, mm -hmm. yeah, no, that is a weird thing to try to explain to somebody like, you know, or even being on stage as a comic where you're like getting the silent, like, mm, you know, like, but they were really into it. And like what I've, what I've learned to do is just kind of like after a while, like I just, I focus on them. Yeah, and I'm like I'm gonna I'm gonna perform for these folks or whatever, and they're having a good time. And if they're having a good time, then sometimes again, like you so, hope for the laughter yeah, to pop hope up, it spreads, yeah. and it'll spread or whatever. Well, what what's interesting about what you do too is you don't have you don't have a bailout. Like you can't just like if if I'm telling a joke and somebody's not feeling a joke, I can bail. Yeah, you can bail if somebody's not feeling your persona, but you can bail from that joke. But you can't just all of a sudden become this lighthearted. You know what I mean? Happy dude in the middle of a set yeah. where you've been saying a bunch of shit. Like, it I, it would, I should do more sets where I just say a bunch of, of shit that it may be perceived offensive because it'll, it'll thicken your skin, it feels like. Because you, every time you go up, you're going to have to deal with that or at least possibly have to deal with that. Um, and there's no way out of it. Like, yeah. this, this is, this is, you know what I mean, what I'm doing. You, if you on board, you on board. If not, well, there's another seven yeah, minutes of this shit. Yeah. Like, I feel like I feel like you you develop such a a better like loyalty like in the following or whatever. Loyalty, you, loyalty, like, loyalty. Yeah, you know I mean like because like they're invested in like a lot of like you know the the folks that like you know I mean they come to my shows or whatever and like my like my humor or whatever like a lot of a lot of those shows especially like coming uh, beginning they were rooms where most of the people hated me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, but like there were about like five or six folks that were in there that, that were like, yo, <laughs> I really fucks with you. And then they fucks with you for life. Oh, they fuck with yeah, you for mean, real. Like, yeah. if, they, if they were, they if fuck you with find, you hard body. Yeah, if you find six motherfuckers that love you in a crowd of a hundred, they are with well, you. Yeah, that's yeah. the game yeah, we're that's, playing. And that's, yeah, you, you hang on to them. Yeah. That's the yeah. game we're playing. Feed, yep. feed the people who will feed you. Like, yeah. You, this is definitely, you're not going to make everyone laugh. No. Yeah, you know, no one ever will. No matter who you are, I'm not gonna please everyone. But yeah, there, I definitely. There's people early on that were like, "Hey, I really like your stuff, man." And if I like put something out there on online or whatever, like, "Hey, this is actually really important. Come to this." They like they'll be there. Nice, which is fucking great. Well, I'd I'd like to throw my hat in there as one of the early supporters. I've always been a fan of Alex Pugh. I'm glad you're man, here. Man, don't let him latch on. Hey, don't let him latch on. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, does he know you don't went full time now? He like, yeah, let me get on this early. <laughs> no, both you guys too. We've been doing this for a little bit. Uh, we've been, yeah. we've been, we 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 vets now a little bit. <laughs> Sorta. I think in the comedy game we're still pygmies, but oh yeah, no, we're, in we're, the in the, we're babes in the in the big scheme the, of yeah. things, yeah. 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 But, but we're all starting to find our way. I mean, you're finding different avenues. We're finding different avenues, yeah. and we're we're just we're able to stamp our imprint on on the culture yeah. here, and hopefully nationally. And it's exciting to see, and it's really good to see you know you take that step and you continue to you know drive forward what you're doing. Because again, you're very well written. It's like is there's value in what you're doing? It's funny shit, you know what I mean? Like, and, and if you don't like it, you probably take it a little too personal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's uh, a comedy show. Yeah, yeah. you yeah. might be a little too personal. But. Yep.
Very true. <laughs> so uh, where can they find you, Alex? Uh, Alex Stapula on Twitter, Alexander Stapula on Instagram, because somebody in Colorado has their, like, baby in a lobster costume. They took Alex Stapula, so I couldn't have that. Um, <laughs> yeah, online, Alex Stapula. The, the pits for Yeah, You Like This, the weird German thing that we talked about briefly, this character I do. And then uh, Give Me Murder, Give Me Death, my podcast is on all the social media and iTunes. All right, Dave, where can they find us? Right, if you're looking for us, you can find us on epicastnetwork.com slash partnerspod. You can find us on IG, Twitter, and Facebook at partnerspod. And you can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Lipson, and Google Play under Drinking Partners. Hey, we want to thank Alex Tepula for coming out, chilling with us, chopping it up. As always, Drinking Partners is the crew, Epicast is the family, and we out of here. Podcast will be a review.